Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir. Now, as I have done the past few weeks, Thursday rolled around and when I came home from work, I fired up Disney Plus to watch the latest episode of She-Hulk. I watched the opening couple minutes with Johnny Blaze. <laughs> no, no, no. Not the cool Ghost Rider we all know, although I prefer Danny Catch. No, this Johnny Blaze, who repeats his name so often that it seems like they're trying too hard at fan service. No, this Johnny Blaze is a hack illusionist. So I turned that shit right off and I left town. I figured I'd give the episode another chance. You see, this show is strange. We are roughly 15 minutes away from the middle of the series, and I feel like we're just barely hitting what the show was described to be. Jen juggling superhero life and her career as an attorney. Okay, now I, I get it. It's a comedy, but this, this show makes it seem like Jen is just bad at her job. You see, there's two plot lines running through this show. Wong is suing Johnny Blaze for his misuse of the mystic arts, and Jen is getting into the dating scene. Now, guess, guess which one of these is the main and better plot of the show? Hint, it's not Jen's, even though her name is in the title. So let's take a look at Jen's plot first. Nikki comments on Jen's dating profile, and Jen is barely getting any matches. But once Jen creates a dating profile as She-Hulk, the matches start rolling in. So Jen gets a bunch of matches immediately as She-Hulk, and so she starts going on dates, which weren't really too successful until she meets a guy that's a doctor and he's good looking, and most of all, he listens so okay yeah he ends up ducking out on her the next morning when he sees her as Jennifer now this doesn't bug me much as this did happen in the comics but whatever I'll circle back to my observations about this and I have a theory given just one line of dialogue now Wong's plot is arguably the main plot, the A plot. You see, TV Tropes refers to something called the Idiot Ball. It was named by Hank Azaria. For the purposes of plot and story, when a character needs to be stupid or else the issue or uh, problems faced in the story would just be avoided and over in seconds, well, that's when they're carrying the Idiot Ball. Wong has a pocket full of idiot balls. Wong, who, you know, just might be a fugitive for breaking the abomination out of prison, now returns to court to sue Johnny Blaze after Johnny slings a party girl named Madison into Wong's apartment or sanctum or whatever. You know, instead of, uh, I don't know, just taking Johnny's sling ring, you, you know, something that Spider-Man literally did to Doctor Strange and isn't it Wong's job as the master of the mystic arts to keep artifacts like this out of the wrong hands Wong is obviously powerful enough to just defeat Johnny but if Wong did his job as a sorcerer supreme there would be no A plot and the only person worse than Wong at his job is Jen. You see, in a civil case like this, surprise witnesses actually very, very rarely ever happen. Now, as I mentioned last week, I'm not a lawyer, but even I know that there's a process called discovery where the witnesses would be named and both parties' attorneys can address them. Jen apparently forgot about this and worst of all she decides to pull the surprise witness thing by having Wong sling Madison to the courtroom you know that was a surprise for everyone including Madison and of course Madison is drunk in the middle of the afternoon 
and even Jen has to admit it was a bad idea. He would reap my soul and the souls of all I love, which honestly is so dramatic, and I hate drama. Okay, this was a mistake. It was your idea. The demon, I think his name is Jake. Now back to Jen's plot. It's all about Jen trying online dating, but something really stood out to me. Jen's identity as She-Hulk is public knowledge, and we keep seeing reports of her on the news, using the exact headshot that she uses in her profile, but hardly anyone responds to her ad? I find this hard to believe, given her celebrity status. Notice that once she creates a profile of She-Hulk later, the matches start rolling in immediately. I have a theory about that. Remember in the first episode, Jen breaks the fourth wall and tells us, the viewers, that besides us, the only ones that know that Jen is a Hulk are her family, whom we find out that Bruce called, and Nikki. Now, we don't know how Jen and Nikki interacted before she became She-Hulk, but we could probably guess they were best friends even then. And while going through Jen's phone to check out Jen's dating profile, we get this comment from Nikki. Oof, hetero life is grim. Okay, you see, this is how you introduce a character's sexuality. It's much more organic than when Jen's assistant Bradley told her that he was gay way back in Mariko Tamaki's She-Hulk comic run uh, back in 2017. You know, when Jen was gray and just calling herself Hulk. I, I did like this moment compared to how heavy-handed it was in the comic. But this got me thinking. And I've been talking about Nikki fangirling over Jen in just about every episode and calling her Jen's biggest cheerleader. Now, we don't know if Nikki is gay or maybe she's bi or whatever. We just know that she seems to not be heterosexual. But this does cast things in a different light. Remember how I just said that Nikki was playing with Jen's phone to look at her dating profile and the matches and the things that Jen put up? There's even a joke later on when Jen gets an alert that she has no matches. And this is what causes her to make a separate She-Hulk profile, the one that gets so many hits. And this got me thinking, what if... Nikki sabotaged Jen's dating profile. What if Nikki set it up that Jen wouldn't get as many matches? Well, at least until Jen started over with a new profile that Nikki had not touched. Could it be that Nikki has a gay crush on Jen, especially now that Jen is She-Hulk? I mean, Nikki being Jen's biggest cheerleader, that now seems almost... Like she has a thing for her. At least that's how it's starting to look to me. Because she is just way, way overly obsessed with Jen. Now that we've seen the first four episodes that the media and critics were allowed to see. What score would I give this episode? Not as high as the critics, let me tell you. But surprisingly, I gave it a three. Wong and Jen are idiots. But... For the first time in the series, I I actually chuckled a couple times. Even the character of Madison, she wasn't funny at first, but her constant drunken antics somehow horseshoed back around to being funny by the end, given how hard they leaned into it. And the courtroom scene has some bits that were amusing in the cartoonish kind of way, like uh, the old Night Court sitcom. Now, had the show not actually made me laugh, given that it is a comedy, I would have probably gone with a four o'clock or even lower. I mean, Jen is so inconsistent, you know, her characterization. So I'm hoping that what we're seeing will be explained in a future episode that Jen is less inhibited as She-Hulk, just like in the comics. Well, anyway, that does it for me this week. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Um, seriously, Jen, that goo all over you? Yeah, that goo is demon guts. Hell, that 
that's a demon thumb you just flicked out of your hair. You look like you just stepped out of some harem-themed hentai. I know you're thirsty, but go shower for Christ's sakes.